Welcome back to City Exodus. I would like to pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything, Lord. Lord, please help people to be encouraged. And we know you're coming soon, Lord. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise him, for he is thy health and salvation. All ye who hear, now to his temple draw near. Join ye in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord, who doth prosper thy work and defend. Thee. Surely his goodness and mercy here daily attend thee. Ponder anew what the Almighty can do. With his love we befriend thee. If you want to stay up to date with what's been going on in our ministry and, and what's been going on with us, please make sure you follow us on Facebook on, under City Exodus. Follow us on Facebook and also don't forget to hit the, the bell down below to make sure you subscribe and that you're notified every time a new video comes out. We don't want you to miss anything and we want to make sure that you guys are always encouraged. Wanted to do a quick plug of the Adventist Agricultural Conference, better known as Ad Agra. Um, if you recall, in a previous episode, um, going to the, this conference in Texas uh, last year really gave me a new perspective. It was really an answered prayer. God really opened my eyes to more than just country living, but the whole, uh, everything that involves and, and around just character building. It's the first time I heard the true education message, how important agriculture is. Uh, just There's just so many things that are tied to country living that I didn't realize. And so I really suggest that if any of you can go, the 2019 conference will be in Gladstone, Oregon, January 16th through 19th uh, of 2019. There will be some pretty awesome speakers uh, this year for the conference, such as keynote speaker Emian Wolf uh, from Wolf's Green Dirt Farm, Pavel Goya, the main speaker, uh, Michael Treviso from, from Five College Farms. David Westbrook will be talking about country living. He's from Country Living University. Uh, John Dysinger's family from Bountiful Blessings Farm in Tennessee. Angela Boothby from the Heritage Academy in Tennessee. Bob Gregory from Berea Gardens Agricultural Center. If you need more information, you can visit their website at www dot adventist ag dot org that's www dot adventist ag dot org so i wanted to give you a home update so about two and a half weeks after the home was delivered and you saw it delivered in two pieces uh, i immediately notified uh, the in home installers these are the people who would be putting the thing putting the the two pieces together doing the roofing and making sure the the union or the marriage of the two would would happen and they would also handle balancing blocking and leveling it and also doing the drywall the carpeting and all the connections to all the utilities and so i was under the impression that a whole crew would come after speaking to the installers prior and when I realized, when I came, when they finally decided to come, there was only one person, one person. I said, where is the rest of your crew? I said, you're looking at them. I'm just waiting for the boss. 
uh, which is the person who I was uh, working with and talking to. And as the day went, he was there around 12 o'clock and I was expecting them early in the morning. The one guy came around noontime waiting for his boss, telling me that his boss told him to come really early and he had been there, he started working on it, uh, but it had already been about 1 or 2 p.m. And so I ended up just talking to him and it turned out to be a divine appointment. So as I started talking to him, making small talk, we started talking about music and he said, I only listen to gospel music. I said, oh wow, great, are you a Christian? He said, yeah, look at my hat. And I didn't realize his hat was a, I thought it was a John Deere hat, but it was a John 316 hat. It looked like John Deere. It's one of those hats uh, where it kind of looks like, it, it's supposed to look like John Deere, but it's actually John 316. And so that kind of opened up some conversation. And he asked me, what, what uh, church do I attend? And I told him that I was a Seventh-day Adventist. And he said that he was a Christian, that he was a, he, he's a, he's a, he, kind of like an evangelist. He's a preacher and he's very involved in his church. And he said, wow, I really love you Adventists. And I said, why, why is that? He said, I really love how you talk about prophecy. I said, wow, prophecy? Well, yeah, we, we're really big on prophecy. And he said, I, I watch uh, 3 ABN. And I said, wow, you watch 3 ABN? He's like, yeah, my favorite pastor that I love hearing about uh, prophecy is Stephen Bohr. And I said, wow, amen. And he said, but for some reason, they keep talking about uh, prophecy and mentioning some, some things that I'm not really sure of. And so when I went home, I went home, I told him that I'll be back because I had to do some errands. And I ended up bringing uh, him some fruit and uh, some water. And with that, I brought the book uh, Conf Conflicto de los Siglos. I guess that's conflict. I guess that's a great controversy in Spanish. I happened to have one. And when I gave it to him, I finally returned to the property. I gave the fruit to him and the water and I gave him the book and he said, Oh, I've heard of this. Every time I watch 3ABN and watch someone talking about prophecy, they always mention the great controversy. They always mention this book. I've always wanted to know. And so I said, well, here you go. And he was thanking me. And we ended up talking more and we and I, he asked me what I was doing and why I was moving out here where I was from and I told him why. And um, I just told him what that we wanted to, you know, what we wanted to do. And, and the Lord was calling us out here to do minis uh, ministries and missionary work. And uh, he, we prayed, we prayed with one another. And it was really just an, an awesome, an awesome experience. So praise the Lord that I was able to witness to, to one person. And he, if it had his boss had been there, that might have not happened. Thanks God, Ernie. God bless you, Ernie. Thank you for your minister. Thank you for serving serve God. Always, you keep going. You, know? you, you can give you the more best in your life for God. God bless you. So they finally got there. His boss came. It was just them two. And they ended up finishing the leveling and blocking. And since then, I haven't really heard from them. And so this is something that um, I was kind of worried about. And, um, you know, there are some... I was trying to contact them. I was just worried, but uh, um, you know, I I just have to really leave it to God. I don't really want to go into great detail, but uh, I'm just having a difficult time with these installers, uh, with with a boss or uh, with a man that I've been communicating with. But as I was stressed, I really just had to stop and think and say, "Well, I've done my part, Lord. Um, I really don't know what else to do." Uh, and I just really have to leave it in his hands. And during this time, if you recall, we're we're doing a lot of the outreach. A lot of the outreach has already been planned for the countywide fair that I've been mentioning. And so as we're doing these, uh, these builders, uh, these installers uh, have been a lot on my mind and I could really pursue it more. But I know, I know that I have to really put my trust in God. We must let God do what we can't. And so I believe that this is where I need to learn patience. If there's one thing that I've been learning in my studies and in my reading is that we need to wait patiently. We need to wait for the answer and not do it our own way. You know, we see examples of this is when God had promised something already and all it took was just patience to wait, wait for the promise to be fulfilled. When we look at the story of Abraham and Sarah, Instead of waiting for God to fulfill His promise of a son to inherit the blessing, they took it upon themselves because they just couldn't wait. It says, Abraham had accepted without question the promise of a son 
but he did not wait for God to fulfill his word in his own time and way. A delay was permitted to test his faith in the power of God, but he failed to endure the trial, thinking it impossible that a child should be given her in her old age. Sarah suggested as a plan by which the divine purpose might be fulfilled that one of her handmaidens should be taken by Abraham as a secondary wife. Another example is Jacob and his mom, Rebecca. Jacob needed only to wait and he would have eventually had the birthright. But instead, they took it upon themselves. Jacob and Rebecca succeeded in their purpose, but they gained only trouble and sorrow by their deception. God had declared that Jacob should receive the birthright and his word would have been fulfilled in his own time had they waited in faith for him to work for them. But like many who now profess to be children of God, they were unwilling to leave the matter in his hands. So if God has already promised a certain thing, especially through his word, we can only do our part and he can do what we can't. And you see this time and time again in the Bible. So going back to the home, I'm going to let God work that out. There's only so much I can do. So we focused on the opportunities God had given us to minister while we wait for the result of the home. So we did our outreach at the fair and it was, it was just an amazing time. So many testimonies. It was just amazing. So we had the health booth at the county fair. We had a 10 by 10 space and realized that it was, it was too small, but we were still able to see about 161 people go through that booth. And of the 161 people, we had about 61 contacts who actually went through the whole screening process and wanted either health cooking classes and health tips, Bible studies, prophecy seminars, and they checked off one of those and left their contact information. And this is amazing because now the work will truly start and we could actually follow up with all of these people. We combine efforts with other churches around the area and our church is about 20 to 30 people. The other churches that we were working with are, are smaller than that, are probably less than that. And so the people that volunteer from those churches, we had maybe about three or four people coming from those churches that helped us at that booth. But we had an amazing time. It was definitely a blessing, not only a blessing for others, but a blessing to us and a blessing to be able to fellowship with other people, uh, people on fire to want to do the work in these last days. It says here, Christ has promised the gift of the Holy Spirit to his church and the promise belongs to us as much as to the first disciples. But like every other promise, it is given on conditions. There are many who believe and profess to claim the Lord's promise. They talk about Christ and about the Holy Spirit, yet receive no benefit. They do not surrender the soul to be guided and controlled by the divine agencies. We cannot use the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is to use us. Through the Spirit, God works in His people to will and to do of His good pleasure. But many will not submit to this. They want to manage themselves. This is why they do not receive the heavenly gift, only to those who wait humbly upon God who watch for His guidance and grace is the Spirit given. The power of God awaits their demand and reception. This promised blessing claimed by faith brings all other blessings in its train. It is given according to the riches of the grace of Christ, and He is ready to supply every soul according to the capacity to receive. Friends, when we ready ourselves, surrender it all to God, ready to be used by the Holy Spirit, then that gift will be given to us. The disciples received this same gift when they were of one accord, of one mind, when they finally put their differences aside and became one. And with this is how the gospel spread quickly in those days. And the same could happen now to consecrate our life, to surrender all, to literally surrender all to God, to be able to be used by the Holy Spirit and submit to Him is when we will have that latter rain. You know, we were blessed to have just the few volunteers that we had at the booth and the few that were from the neighboring churches. And now as part of the follow-up, as just a handful of people that want to be involved in this joint effort between multiple churches, we want to follow up with only less than, maybe less than 10 people to be able to 
follow up with 61 contacts just from that county alone. Friends, truly the harvest is plenty and the workers are few. And it's just a beautiful thing when you have other people from other churches really combine efforts and really share the resources and be able to utilize all of us, not just from one church, but multiple churches helping each other. And it says here, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So with much prayer, we will ask for the Lord's leading, for the Holy Spirit to be with us and to guide us, to minister to all these people through the health message, and to bring the gospel to the cities around us. Friends, I'll tell you what, if you've looked at the episodes, the previous episodes, I've probably been a vegan since the beginning of these episodes, maybe a couple years before I even started this channel, but really dove into the health message when Kim started looking at medical missionary work, at the health message, three months into it, and I've always asked the Lord, what can I do? What can I do, Lord? How can I serve you? And he's throwing me into these health, these health booths, uh, reading more of the health message. It's just a lot, and I really don't have a lot of experience, but I'm really leaning on God to give me the wisdom, continuing to give me new light, to be able to apply it to my life and to be able to impart it to others. And he's introduced me to so many people that have taught me more and have showed me more. And it's just amazing what God can do when you really submit yourself to doing his will and his work. So friends, I really believe in, in, in the spirit of prophecy, in inspiration, in scripture. It is the health message. It is the right arm of the gospel that will really be the wedge to the gospel for people in these last days. It says here, As you go through life, you will meet with those whose lot is far from easy. Toil and deprivation with no hope for better things in the future. Make their burden very heavy. Careworn and oppressed, they know not where to turn for relief. Put your whole heart into the work of helping them. It is not God's purpose that His children shall shut themselves up to themselves. Remember that for them as well as for you, Christ died. Hold out to them a helping hand. Make it a rule never to utter one word of doubt or discouragement. You can do much to brighten the lives of others by words of holy cheer. The humblest and poorest of the disciples of Jesus can be a blessing to others. They may not realize that they are doing any special good, but by their unconscious influence, they may start waves of blessings that will widen and deepen, and the blessed results they may never know till the day of final reward. They are not required to weary themselves with anxiety, about success. They have only to go forward quietly, doing faithfully the work God's providence assigns, and their life will not be in vain. Their own souls will be growing more and more into the likeness of Christ. They are workers together with God in this life, and are thus fitting for the higher work and the unshadowed joy of the life to come. Wow! So in this work, will you have the opportunity to shape your character into the character of Christ? So now I mentioned being patient. Well, I, I have a news update for you on the home. Praise God, we are getting the well. They sent me an email. They said that things are moving ahead of schedule and we can drill the well as soon as this week. I called them immediately and I said, praise the Lord. I knew it. We were scheduled for December and they even told me as far out as February. And now they're saying they could do it at any time, even, even, at this, even this week. And the reaction from, from them was, praise God, we knew that you would call us right away and we knew you would get that reaction out of you. This definitely is going to be a faith walk come August. I can't wait 
to update you with what God has in store for us. God is good. Be patient, friends. Be patient during these delays, during these challenges and trials. It says, often men pray and weep because of the perplexities and obstacles that confront them. But if they will hold the beginning of their confidence steadfast unto the end, he will make their way clear. Success will come to them as they struggle against the apparently insurmountable difficulties. And with success will come the greatest joy. The time will come when God answers in his timing. He will answer through his words. As we learned in the previous episode, he promises to answer you personally. Don't give up or be discouraged. Rather, be patient. Be patient in waiting for the answer and be very fervent in prayer. Let God direct your path on what to do each day while He takes care of the things that you can't. Our job is to obey. And as we know from reading scripture, obedience always leads to blessing. I hope you've been encouraged. Now be blessed and be a blessing. Be blessed and be a blessing.